Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's all that I can say right now. Guys, UFC 200 is supposed to be the biggest event the UFC has ever put on. Earlier this week, I put out a tweet saying that this is the best fight card that has ever been put on a pay-per-view event for any sport that I've ever seen. And I still want to stand by that, but it's becoming substantially harder now that the main event of UFC 200 has been removed. John Jones, the former and kind of still, depending on how you want to look at it, light heavyweight champion of the UFC, 205-pound champion, has been pulled from the card because he failed a drug test. Or I guess what USADA, which is the USADA, uh, the people who handle the drug tests independently of the UFC, they're not in, in cahoots with the UFC, obviously. Uh, they pulled this fight from the card due to John Jones. Uh, it says basically that there's a, a potential drug test violation stemming from his June 16th, 2016 drug test. Now, unfortunately, this is not good timing. I mean, it couldn't be good timing at all, but, uh, for something like this to happen, but this is a particularly shitty time for this to happen because, being that this was a drug test that happened so close to the fight, there's no time right now for them to do an actual legal review on this. The USADA does have it where there will be an independent uh, person that's looking at this situation and they will determine exactly what the, the situation is, whether John Jones will be suspended things like that, and Jones will obviously have a chance to go through the the typical court system to try and uh, get this thing figured out and not be suspended, but for right now, because there's not enough time for that to happen, he has to be pulled from this card, and this is absolutely brutal, obviously, for the UFC. Um, we've seen uh, Dana White come out and do a press conference already where he just looked absolutely disgusted and just you know, like he had been up all night last night and it's going to be up all night tonight, uh, you know, just stress the hell out. It's a terrible, terrible situation for a company that has been doing as well as the UFC has been doing recently. And, you know, when you've got your superstar talent, John Jones, I mean, this is a bad, bad thing. This is worse than what happened with Roman Reigns in the WWE la this past week. This is the one of the worst possible times for someone to have a drug test violation that I've ever seen in any sport. And let's be honest here, guys. For all intents and purposes, I mean, we already know what happened here. I mean, we don't know if it's performance enhancers or recreational drugs with John Jones, but this guy failed a test. I mean, we can't definitively say that because we don't have 100% proof. But I'm telling you, USADA is not going to be pulling this type of a fight from the main event of UFC 200 unless there's very good reason for it. And, uh, you know, the crazy thing about this is that, there, yes, there are guys who are actually failing tests for things that you can just buy over the counter at GNC and, and it's an accident. It's happened before and it's happened recently in the UFC, but this does not look good for John Jones. John Jones has a history of drug abuse. We're talking not just, you know, marijuana. We're not talking, you know, the, the light stuff. We're talking about cocaine. We're talking about drunk driving. We're talking about hit and runs. Now, obviously, hit and run isn't a, necessarily a, uh, you know, a, a drug offense, but it shows that this guy is irresponsible as hell. And that's absolutely what this looks like. This looks like this guy was out here partying before the biggest fight of his career. And that's what this is. This is the main event of the biggest UFC card of all time. There's a very good chance that this event could have set the new pay-per-view records for the UFC. Not anymore. Okay? Now, Brock Lesnar and Mark Hunt, Jose Aldo, Frankie Edgar... You know, you've got you've got other great fights on this card. We've got Misha Tate and Amanda Nunez. We've got Cain Velasquez, Travis Brown. Yes, all of those fights are excellent fights. All of those fights could main event to other shows. Absolutely no question. 
And John Jones versus Mark Hunt could have been the main event for this fight card, and I don't think people would have a hell of a lot of problem with it. But John Jones and Daniel Cormier was the fight for the fight fans, in my opinion. You look at this as a, a, as a person who follows this sport like I am. And guys, if you don't know, I have been covering the UFC. Or I should say I used to cover the UFC because I, I don't do it anymore. But I used to be a, a writer for Bleacher Report. And I covered the UFC for quite a few years, attending events, um, going to press conferences, things like this, interviewing fighters, various different things. And I feel right now for Daniel Cormier because this couldn't, like I said, have happened at a worse time, not just for the UFC, but for Daniel Cormier because this is a guy who has done everything the right way. This is a guy who has fought his way from the very bottom. He came from uh, you know, a background in wrestling, and he's fought his way up in the UFC, fighting at, at, at strike force to begin with and winning that heavyweight tournament when he wasn't even originally in the tournament. This is a guy who won the tournament with big-name fighters in it. We're talking just monstrous name UFC now fighters. We're talking about Fedor and Arlovsky and uh, Verdum was in that tournament. And uh, I'm trying to think of who else, but um, uh, let's see here. Alistair Overeem, all kinds of guys, top-level fighters were in that tournament. Daniel Cormier won that thing unexpectedly at the heavyweight division, dominated the heavyweight division in the UFC. And then opted to drop down to 205, okay? Because he did not want to fight his teammate, Cain Velasquez, who at the time was the UFC heavyweight champion. So this guy dropped down to 205 pounds, fought through everybody. This guy has done an amazing job beating the top of the top level guys in the history of the 205 pound division. The 205 pound division is so stacked with great talent, or it has been so stacked with great talent throughout Daniel Cormier's time in the UFC. And now, he is actually technically the UFC heavyweight, or light heavyweight, excuse me, champion of the world. But the problem is that he has this monkey on his back named John Jones. And this monkey that was on his back defeated him the previous time that these guys fought in a fairly competitive fight. This is a guy, Daniel Cormier, who fought back after that loss, has earned everything that he's gotten, won the UFC light heavyweight championship when John Jones was out for another suspension that he had had prior to this. And Daniel Cormier fought his way back to be in this position, to fight in the main event at UFC 200, and now no longer is it going to happen for him. This is a disgusting situation. John Jones should be ashamed of himself. And I'm saying that as a guy who openly says that I believe John Jones is the greatest fighter in the history of mixed martial arts. I believe that very truly. I believe John Jones is the best fighter in any weight class in the history of mixed martial arts. But he's not acting like it. This is a guy who has taken everything that's been given to him, and thrown it down the drain in a disgusting, despicable act. And that's what this is. No matter how this turns out, unless there's some sort of a situation where USADA screwed up, in which case, dear God, at the ramifications of that, I mean, we could be talking about USADA being complete, like the entire cabinet being cleaned out, if that were to have happened. But chances are, if they're making this decision, they didn't screw up. So the fact is that Daniel Cormier is in this situation now where he is absolutely screwed because of a decision that John Jones decided to make where he took his playtime, I guess, versus getting prepared to fight Daniel Cormier on Saturday night. What's particularly terrible about this situation is that the UFC is not set up in such a way right now where they can take somebody, they can pluck them from the undercard and maybe place them in a main event against Daniel Cormier. They don't have that luxury right now because despite the fact that there are three other events happening this weekend, 
There is no other 205-pound fight. This is it. There's nobody else that can be pu- pulled up from lower on the card to fight Daniel Cormier in the main event for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship, even if someone were to have deserved it. And that's the terrible thing about this, because Daniel Cormier now doesn't get the luxury of fighting in front of what, like I said, might have been the biggest mixed martial arts pay-per-view purchase of all time. He doesn't get to headline that event anymore. That's not on his resume. This is a terrible situation for Cormier, who has done nothing wrong, who deserves more. And yes, the UFC is going to take care of him, because that's what the UFC does. From a financial standpoint, Daniel Cormier is going to be just fine for this fight. But when it comes to the future of Daniel Cormier, when it talks, when we talk about the brand of MMA fighters, when we talk about what these guys can do outside of the cage, the endorsement deals that they can get, their career after the UFC, future pay-per-view buys for cards that these guys might main event. When things like this happen, especially on short notice like this, it hurts those fighters. And mixed martial arts is a limited time only situation. You don't have years and years and years and years. You don't get to be a mixed martial artist for 40 years. You get 5, 10 years if you're lucky to be an MMA fighter. And you fight 2, 3, maybe 4 times a year if you're lucky, if you if you avoid injuries. And so Daniel Cormier is going to have a fight removed from this event. We don't know when he's going to fight next. We don't know if he's going to be defending his title anytime soon. And yes, Gayhard Musasi stepped up a few moments ago from the point of me recording this video, and he tweeted out that he'd be willing to take John Jones' spot in the main event, whether it be for the title or not. And Gayhard Musasi is definitely a qualified opponent. He's a great fighter. But he's preparing for a 185-pound fight. Now, obviously, I'm not going to say that Musasi couldn't, you know, be at 205 now because there's still a couple of days left. But the problem is is that he's his body is not in the condition to be 20 pounds heavier. And Daniel Cormier is going to go into that fight if they were to to have an, a match on Saturday between the two of those, uh, w- between Musasi and Cormier. Cormier is going to outsize him by probably 20 pounds, maybe more. And yes, Musasi does deserve some sort of credit for stepping up in this situation and giving the UFC an opportunity to still have a real quote-unquote main event, although unfortunately I don't think Musasi versus Cormier is exactly what they would want to do. I'm sure that they would, if even if this fight happened, Hunt versus Lesnar would still be the main event. But Musasi does deserve a little bit of credit for that, but I highly, highly doubt that's going to happen. Not to mention, of course, that uh, you know Musasi does have a qualified opponent in Tiago Santos that he's already set to fight earlier on this card. It's going to be in the prelims on UFC Fight Pass. And it might end up getting bumped up now to the Fox 1 prelims. We're not exactly sure how that's all going to work out. But the bottom line here, guys, is that this whole situation is fucked because of one selfish person named John Jones. And I'm disgusted by it. As an MMA fan, as somebody who follows the sport and loves the sport of mixed martial arts, I am disgusted in John Jones. And to be quite honest with you, I would not blame the UFC if they decided to completely cut and walk away from Jones right now. This guy has cost them so much money over the past couple of years with his little injuries here and there and his antics outside the cage and his, you know, getting into a fight with Daniel Cormier at a press conference. I mean, it's it's absolutely insane what the UFC has already had to deal with with this guy. And this is a top level UFC fighter. This isn't some guy on the undercard. This is a guy who is supposed to represent your brand. He's supposed to be one of the main guys representing this company. And he throws it all away in a selfish, despicable act. I am absolutely just disgusted by this whole thing. And I know, guys, 
there are going to be a lot of people who are asking me, why the hell are you covering this? Guys, I'll tell you right now. MMA is something that, as you can probably tell by my reaction, I take very, very seriously. This is a sport that I watch on a weekly basis, absolutely. I follow it very closely. I have friends in the sport. And when I see it, these opportunities that these guys like John Jones get, that they throw away, I just cannot stand it. I'm so upset because I see so many other guys who deserve to be in these spots, who don't have this maybe the natural physical gifts that John Jones has, who don't have the opportunity to just barely train and still scrape by and still beat guys. They have to fight for every damn single thing that they have ever had. Guys like Daniel Cormier. And yet John Jones, despite the fact that he has all those physical advantages, just the natural, amazing physical skills that John Jones possesses, this guy is a mental midget. And it screwed the UFC once again tonight. So with that being said, guys, I am going to wrap up this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I want to hear from you guys, though. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think the UFC should do with John Jones? Do you think that they should, again, let him dictate what happens with this whole situation and, you know, let him go back to rehab or do whatever the hell he needs to do and then come right back and, and hop right back into main event fights? Or do they say, fuck this guy, we've had enough, and cut him from his contract immediately? Because I'll tell you guys, as hard of a decision as it might be and as much as it might help the competition, I think the UFC is completely in the right if they decide to cut John Jones from their roster right now. So thank you again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like on this video if you did. Thank you so much. Let me know if you want to see more UFC-type videos. Might not be doing them on this channel. Might be doing them on another channel in the future, but I wanted to get this one out. So let me know again, guys. Thanks so much for all the support. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys again soon.